Hi, this is Daniel O'Connor from Warbit, and I'm going to give you a quick overview of the Warbit reuse system. So, I'm going to summarize the tool, I'm going to show you how we make it very easy for staff to swap and share surplus assets, I'm going to show how it works, and then I'm going to spend a little bit of time on the metrics we develop and the savings we can demonstrate. So, I used to be a waste manager in the public sector, and I would see this sort of thing on a daily basis. I don't think that any reusable assets should end up in skips or dumpsters. I would like to make reuse mainstream and I want to make reuse as desirable and as easy as buying new goods on Amazon or any e-procurement system. Okay, Surplus assets should never become a waste. It's a symptom of a broken procurement system. If you're happy to skip assets and you're happy to throw reusable assets into the dumpster, this isn't for you. Okay, this is for organizations who want to improve the way they can reuse assets around their organization. So I used to get asked to dispose of surplus assets like this. Okay, so these would be coming out of buildings on my estate and I'd, I would be tasked with finding homes for these new assets. Okay, what I realized was some departments were throwing surplus assets out. Some departments were getting exactly the same thing delivered, sometimes on the same day. So you have the same building with different departments in, one department disposing, one department buying the same thing, no communication between each other. The departments are working in silos, okay? What we try to do is break down those silos by developing an online platform where all staff can get visibility on what other staff have surplus to requirements today or in the future, okay? How does this work? So what we do, we create these online marketplaces within your organization where before staff buy new, they can log on and they can see what other staff have surplus to requirements, okay? And on the flip side of that, when staff try to dispose of assets, instead of phoning up a porter and getting rid of the asset to the skip, they add the asset to Warbit so everybody else can see that asset and what they've got, okay? We link in with your transport system, we link in with your procurement system, so it all runs smoothly and automatically. We really concentrate on matching the disposer with the recipient directly so the asset moves from A to B, not A to store to B, and certainly not A to skip. Okay, so there's a thing called wish list where, for example, if I search for a cabinet today and I don't find a cabinet, then I can add a cabinet to my wish list. And if anybody has a cabinet, I get an email straight away. Okay, and secondly, for building clearances, we've also got a thing called watch lists. Watch lists are where someone from the building clearance manager adds the assets for their building clearance, which will become available at a certain date in the future. If I'm looking for a collapsible desk, I can log on, I can see if a collapsible desk is going to become available in the future, I can add it to my watch list, and then I can manage my procurement needs because I know there's an asset going to become available in the future, so I don't need to buy it today, okay? And also, it also helps the building manager, the building move manager plan for their disposals as part of the building clearance. The building clearance is one of the biggest opportunities for reuse, okay? If the asset isn't traded peer-to-peer -peer internally, where we link in with your logistics or your transport systems, um, you can then move the asset into store if you have a store, and then it can be claimed by other staff while it's in the store. If you don't have a store, there are other features I'll talk about, and that is you can start to trade assets across organizational boundaries okay so we're making a jump from internal to now external reuse and we're making a jump in subject matter but also in legal requirements as well so there's there's obstructions there but we we have a legal framework whereby you can donate and, and trade surplus assets with other organizations on the system so you can trade with the bigger players in your in your region and across the country actually and um, what this looks like in a lot of cities um, and regions in the UK is we've got the big players on the system all trading internally and then they trade with each other and also a lot of the surplus assets that don't get traded internally can then drip into the community and come into schools and charities we we'll give the system to schools and charities for free well, schools get it for free when the council joins, charities get it for free anyway, okay? So when you dispose of an asset into the community, it has a much greater impact, okay? Much greater impact. Importantly, one of the most important things on the system is we track all of the trades, 
We track the financial value, we track the carbon value, we track the waste avoided values, and we can give you this sort of data, which does two things. It increases staff participation, because it's a good news story, but it also gives the senior management an idea of the value of all of those low value, high volume assets out across the estate that don't usually get tracked. And once senior management realise the savings that are possible, you can then put more resources into this program to again feed positive feedback into the program and make it more effective. Okay. So what's the way forward? Get me in to meet with your stakeholders or I can do an online demonstration where I can answer all of their personal questions. So get in touch with me. It's Daniel. I'm the head of customer happiness at Warbit. Get in touch. We can set up an online demo. We can take this forward.